Well, many guys, and welcome to my channel, Ikamalam Dingo Zinke, and thank you so much for joining me today. Please help me grow this channel by liking and subscribing. So in today's video, I am talking cost of living in UK, and I am basing this on my living expenses as well as what I have observed around me. So obviously, this video is going to be totally different to your life. But I'm hoping that you can take parts of this video to sort of estimate how much it would cost you if you were to move here. So I'm going to share some links like in terms of the websites where you can um, get to see how much rent would be and all other costs that I'm going to be mentioning today. Yeah, so before I get into the video, I just want to say I have been trying to hype myself throughout the week and I'm hoping that I am hyped enough for this video. <laughs> because it's really been an emotionally exhausting week uh, i couldn't wait for friday and luckily we have a long weekend so i have got monday which is tomorrow off and then yeah tuesday back to work i also have a week off in mid second week of september which is my birthday week so i'm looking forward to that but just to tell you why it's been emotionally exhausting so i changed roles um at work so i moved from core audit to digital audit and I've been trying to transitioning to trans I've been trying to transition to the role and it's been it hasn't been consistent, right? Like I haven't really found my space. Yes, it's been a month, but I think because I already have this working experience and knowledge of audit and I'm I'm given these things that relate to co audit, like I'm struggling to <laughs> separate the two. And it's a bit frustrating. Anyway, I have been down and I hope that I'm hyped enough for this video, guys. I really need to get back to the momentum because I want to kick ass in this job. I really want to kick ass. And I've really wanted to be in this role since I moved. That's what I focused on. I want to get into digital because I want to get into tech. I want to mix the two. But I will let you guys in into this new move, maybe like in six months time. Because I really have to first see how things go because before I can give you something about the department and the role okay so getting into the cost um in uk first of all i'm gonna say that it really depends on the location here like where you are um with the expenses so the first thing being um accommodation or rent so i currently live in birmingham and i rent a one bedroom apartment which is quite nice it's in the city center and it's um it's like five minutes walk from the main station and I live next to what is this place called post box no no my apartments are post box, a post box mailbox yes I live next to the mailbox and the mailbox is sort of like a shopping center it has a very nice restaurant it's next to a canal and um, what else is there there's a there's a small grocery store an express store so I'm quite central and my rent here is 850 pounds excluding bills so i'm in birmingham right city center then if you were for example in london or closer to london you would most probably pay more for a one bedroom apartment also it depends where you are because i know if you're like in central london you would pay way way more maybe even above two thousand pounds right but as as you move further away from the city center or central london then the rent becomes cheaper a lot of people here share apartments so if for example you get a two-bedroom apartment here in birmingham you can get a two-bedroom for like a thousand pounds or one thousand two hundred pounds then you can split it with someone and it becomes very cheap i personally do not want to share i did the sharing last year last year i was in milton Keynes, which is a small city just outside outside london it's um it's about 35 minutes by train and i was also paying 850 there including bills sharing an apartment an apartment which was a four bedroom apartment i had my bathroom so that's the cost but currently i pay 850 for a one bedroom apartment and that is excluding bills right so if we talk bills we talking about electricity uh, council tax um wi-fi water what else gas i don't pay gas though gas 
and any other thing that you need to run your apartment right that is a necessity so my council council tax basically is um i think it's more like taxes the rates and taxes right that you pay to your council and it's for the services that they provide to you such as the library the traffic lights the street lights garbage police station firefighters fire station yeah those things that's what the council tax um is for so if you wanted to look at in term, look at a property like how much it would cost including the council tax if you go to a website called right move zoopla or spare room right and you search for an apartment in the area that you want to move into you will see in there that they will usually write like council tax ban so the ban is how you would determine how much the council tax is going to be for your property so council tax is based on the value of the property as well as the location so oh <laughs> the council tax but yeah it's based on that and if you are a single person like me, I stay by myself, you get a 25% discount. So yeah, and currently my council tax is 98 pounds and it is still very high, but it is 98 pounds with the 25% discount. And then for my water, I pay 20 pounds a month. And that's just a debit order that I said really, but I use less than that. And then for my electricity, how much do I pay? I think I pay around about 105 pounds a month. And that's also just me, you know, trying to be safe, really. But I definitely use less than that. And then my Wi-Fi is 20 pounds as well, which is very good. And that's unlimited. Um, What else did I mention? I think those costs, that's how much. So all in all, for me, I think it cost me about one thousand one hundred pounds or one thousand one hundred and fifty pounds to pay for my basic things in this apartment. Okay, then the next thing is transport costs. So it depends where you are. Like if you, for example, you are here in Birmingham and you work in Birmingham and you live in the city centre, chances are you're going to be walking to your working place. And you won't have to spend a cent on transport fees but if you live maybe a bit further out of the city you'll probably be taking a bus and a bus fare is like two pounds like one single trip um, I think you can also buy like a, a weekly ticket or a monthly ticket which which has a discount so it wouldn't cost you that much really or you could be using a train now train um, with the it depends really with the times and that you're going to be taking the train and the day that you're going to be taking the train weekends are cheaper than during the week also it's cheaper to use the train midday than morning and afternoon like between i'd say between 6 a.m or 6 a.m and 9 or 9 9 half past nine ish and the trains are uh, that's a peak town peak time so the, the prices are higher and then also between let's say half past three and six o'clock 6 p.m um also that's a peak time so train trains are a bit higher so it depends really where you are so if you for I, for example now i work in london and i have to travel to london once in a while well not once in a while sometimes when i'm needed in office i have to be there so when i get to london i have to use the underground um which is also dependent on where you are going around london uh, for me, from Houston station to my to the station next to work, return trip is about five pounds, five to six pounds. That's just a return trip. So that's how much it costs. But generally, the trains, I don't know. It depends because there's like the faster trains, then there, there's this one slow train that I hate. I hate that train. So that one is cheaper. And then there's Avanti. Avanti is faster. And other trains, what are other trains there? I know Avanti, Cross Country, uh, North, the North one. You must avoid that one. <laughs> North Western something, yeah. But I feel like the trains are reasonable or are fair. And also if you book in advance, then you get to get like cheaper tickets. I book in advance, so I do like capitalize on that and save a bit when i need to go to office in london and now the nice thing is that my days in office are like i know ahead of time that i'm going to be there 
so that's the transport cost uber is i feel like uber is also reasonable i i can't complain really because the other time i had to take an uber from the airport to my apartment i never take an uber from the airport unless i get to the city um to the airport after midnight where there are no trains so i can't take the train so this one time i had to it was like three in the morning when i landed at the airport and the the uber was like 18 pounds which i still felt like was not a lot you know it was really not a lot of money considering the distance um it would have been way cheaper if i used the train but i mean it was three in the morning there are no trains running at that time so yeah that's the cost the next cost um is groceries your food now that depends on what you buy and where you buy i feel like the cost in the grocery stores is the same throughout the country now i haven't been in all parts of this country but i believe what you buy in tesco in birmingham is the same cost as london at least i'd like to believe that so grocery stores here we've got the low cost ones which is aldi Lidl, asda then we've got the ones on the upper hand of things like your woolworths right in south africa here we've got MS and waitrose i think i personally shop at lidl and aldi because i will go for the cheapest but there are other stores like a tesco sainsbury's and morrison's it really really depends on what you buy so from not like my monthly costs are 260 pounds which is quite high really but that's because i buy um what you call <laughs> oh the word just okay i buy my protein stuff yeah uh, but there's a word that i was looking for yeah but i buy my protein powders creatines and other things that help me to boost my protein intake so which is why my monthly cost my grocery cost is a bit higher but if you were just buying like normal food i do believe that you can spend about 120 to 150 pounds a month on your groceries which i think is reasonable i honestly find uk to be much cheaper in groceries compared to south africa especially if you want to eat healthy um i feel like it's expensive to eat healthy in south africa that's just my opinion i've tried it there and my groceries were just the price the cost was just too high for a single person so the four costs that i've mentioned which is rent bills um transport and groceries like your your necessities that you're really gonna spend money on there are other costs like your cosmetics now it depends maybe you do your cosmetics with your groceries or you don't i don't and my grocery my cosmetic costs i know it is quite high because i just like skincare products and i also make my own uh body butter bath oils and um i make bath oils and body oil yes so um that's a hobby for me i enjoy doing that yeah and then um there's like my facial products which i love i buy the ordinary products mostly and they are not expensive but what i tend to do is just buy like things in bulk then they tend to last me for about two to three months or three to four months depends but I generally spend around about 100 to 120 pounds on those things and they would last me for quite some time. So it does also depend on what you use on your skin. That's another cost. Then gym fees. I'm a gym fan and it. I go to the gym group. The gym group is just a gym, really nothing fancy about it. It doesn't have all the latest equipment and stuff. And I pay 24 pounds there and that's because I want to use this other machine to to look at my body fat and I also want to get this other 
flavored water otherwise you can actually get a membership for 18 pounds and it doesn't have a pool sauna or anything like that it's just you know a gym last year i used to go to another one called banatine and that one was a health club so it had a pool sauna steam room um jacuzzi and all those things and it was quite nice i enjoyed it but it was 38 pounds in fact it was 48 or 45 pounds and i used to get a discount which made it 38 pounds so i quite liked that one as well but uh, another problem with that gym was it was opened between 6 a.m and 9 p.m whereas the gym group is opened 24 7 and i like that there are other gyms as well which operate the same as um the gym group so the gym fee depends on what you want if you just want to go in the workout and go home then you can go to the gym group and pay 18 pounds if you just want to work out and leave 24 pounds if you want to wear yourself on that machine or uh, get the water and then we've got nails <sighs> guys if you do nails eh, I, wanna lay now, I, I just like my nails so this set of nails was 50 pounds but i generally budget 60 um and i paid 50 including soak off but my where i normally go it would have been more i know that salon now charges more i didn't know i just went there because tiktok recommended it and it's expensive actually so i'm gonna be going to this one now so nails 50 pounds they could be less when i was in milton Keynes, i used to pay 32 pounds for the same thing acrylic um extensions and so forth but in Birmingham, somehow it's not, it's it's expensive compared to uh, Milton Keynes. It could be that I'm going to the expensive places. I haven't found cheaper places, but yeah. But if you just do your gel on your nails, I think it's twenty two pounds. I paid twenty or twenty two pounds the other time when I did that. So that's nails. Then hair. With hair, I would advise you, if you can do your hair, please do it. Don't look for somebody to do it for you. If you can't. Just bring enough wigs. Yeah, bring enough wigs. Because and that's not going to do me. I don't know what's happening. My hair is not great, I know, but it's expensive and you're never satisfied, you know? You go to a salon and you pay a lot of money and they don't do exactly what you ask. And I just feel like they are sort of intimidating. And there's like a full of mamel. You tell them that this is what I want to do. And you show them a picture and they do something different. And then they are halfway through and you're like, see, this is not exactly what I asked. And like, no, it is. This other time I went to do it not less braids. Né? And this lady, number one, was applying a lot of gel in my head. Can't a lot, guys. I want a small tub of gel. Oh, 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 that was number one and i didn't like it i was just like i don't like this can't you just do me braids without putting so much gel or not putting gel at all and then um so i wanted small or medium i don't remember but it's size i as i when i was a lot bigger than what i asked like it was a lot bigger and as, as such like as in bar, look, guys we could see through <laughs> yeah and i paid like over 100 pounds for that so it's it's quite pricey if you do get somebody that can do hair you must keep that person i had someone last year but she doesn't do hair for a living so it's hard to book appointments with her um and you know she was fine and her prices were okay and she would do exactly what you ask which was nice she was from ghana or zimbabwe i'm not sure but she would do exactly what i asked without applying gel like she never used gel on my hair so hair doing hair you will never be satisfied ever not unless you find someone who's really great but i doubt and also so the next cost is subscriptions wow i mean we pay for generally people pay right for your netflix um disney plus amazon prime um i forgot the south african ones now you see i've never actually paid for these things in south africa never i only started paying for for even for netflix now i used to use other people's accounts things i don't have friends here now we can share the accounts so i have to pay for my own but now i pay for amazon prime because i use amazon a lot to buy things so yeah it's, it's just easier with the amazon prime because then i get deliveries quicker I pay for Netflix 
so i alternate between netflix and disney plus depending on what i'm watching if i if i plan if i find a new series that i can watch the whole month then and it's on netflix i'll pay for netflix i find otherwise yeah i alternate between the two but that's something that you should actually budget for because it does add up you know nanny i think uh my netflix account is like seven pounds they are all seven pounds or eight pounds if i'm not mistaken seven or eight pounds but if you add up if you pay for all three for example so you would end up paying like 21 pounds a month um and i do not want to pay 21 pounds a month the other thing is your data now guys i don't buy data i don't buy a time or minutes but uh, i've seen people say that they pay between 10 to 20 pounds for their unlimited data so also still not a lot of money really um it's manageable personally i do not maybe next year i'll start paying i have a story why I'm, I'm i'm still traumatized by the amount of money i paid for a sim card when i landed in this country i'm still recovering from that so yeah um and generally i'm mostly home and if i if i am out most places have wi-fi guys so you just connect to the wi-fi there and it works so yeah that's the other cost so entertainment it depends if you are a person that likes going out that goes to concerts that goes to um events or whatever news and then it would most probably be a high now i don't go out that much i don't eat out that much i do go um i prefer to travel i think i like the traveling more than going to a concert or eating out with friends like i prefer to to go to to a country so i i rather save that money for for such things but i do go out and i like doing meetups i don't know if you guys know that meetups a meetup there's a meetup group or app where you can go into and you can find a group that interests you or does things that you like and then you can join that group so i do that um i haven't been to one though in a couple of months but usually this one that i really I like they do like it's just meeting people really like professionals young professionals around birmingham so they will organize like a restaurant where we can all meet and it's usually a lot of people like over 100 people so you can easily find some people there that you can relate to and chat and meet new people i like doing that i dress up for it because it's usually a dress up uh, situation which i enjoy so i do those things um what else do i do <laughs> i've been to the cinema this year something that i don't do ever but i've been actually twice <laughs> but also that's not bad like so it depends really how you if you are a very social person or an antisocial person i feel like i'm an in-between person so food eating out is more like south africa it's expensive guys you know you can buy a meal for 20 pounds but you can still buy your groceries for 20 pounds so it depends what you're willing to sacrifice but you should definitely definitely budget for entertainment because we work hard guys this working is a lot we work hard so do treat yourself um yeah those are the costs that i think you should think about when you do um or when you're thinking about moving so if there's anything that you'd like me to cover do let me know and i will gladly put it on a video and share it with you guys thank you so much stay blessed